I believe 75 to 80 percent of sports fans are in no way woke, right? Because sports is the ultimate meritocracy. Yep, yep. If you are the best at what you do, you get paid the most and you are allowed to excel. That's what should happen in all of American society. Instead, we're bringing identity politics and cancel culture to sports. And I think 75, 80% of sports fans don't want woke sports. I sure hope you're in that 80% that finds woke sports appalling. This channel used to be about my real estate business, but I love sports. I recreated this channel to take on woke sports. I still love my Dallas Cowboys and my Notre Dame Fighting Irish, which I will be talking about as things progress with the season and off season. But I also want to talk about sports directly. No filter, no wokeness. And I'm so over woke sports. So I hope Clay Travis is right. Recently, there's been so many moments of wokeness in sports, but the last couple days have just put me over the top. We saw a guy featured on ESPN who won a women's swimming championship. And then during March Madness, ESPN raised the woke bar even further. But we were warned as to where the sports media was headed. Even I couldn't believe that they would jump into the wokeness pool so deep. By the way, there's a knife fight every day among sports media members to see who can be the wokest. Then we saw this with Leah Thomas formerly Charlie Thomas. Leah, how did that performance measure up to your expectations coming into this meet tonight? I, I didn't have a whole lot of expectations for this. That's a lie right there. He didn't have a lot of expectations. He knew he was going to win. There was no doubt. I mean, she was going, I can't even think straight, that she was going to win. There was no doubt. There was no, there was no mystery in the outcome. But ESPN postures as if this is some big mystery that's waiting to develop. I mean, I was just happy to be here trying to race and compete as best as I could. You've undoubtedly... To compete as best as he could. No, you don't really mean that. If you wanted to compete as best as you could, you'd be swimming in the men's races. Undoubtedly been under the spotlight over the past few months. How have you been dealing with that and reasoning with everything? I try to ignore it as much as I can. I try to focus on my swimming, uh, what I need to do to get ready for my races. Come on. Seriously? ESPN wants to put this out there for us? That's what they want us to think? That he didn't have, she didn't have any expectations of winning? What are we, stupid? And just try to block out everything else. What did that race mean to you? It's. It means the world to, to be here. Be it means the world to be here. Think about the women that couldn't be there because you took their place. But this is the kind of thing that I see happening on ESPN. They have no problem pushing this narrative. They have no problem pushing the agenda. It, it drives me crazy. It seems like they just don't care. I saw that insanity and click. I had to change the channel. I was out. No, no more reason to watch. They've raised the bar as high as they can, I thought. But then they took it a little bit higher. Okay, this is during the March Madness game, women's March Madness game, between South Carolina and Howard University. The game sucked, by the way. South Carolina was beating them 44 to 4 at halftime. But listen to this insanity. Well, Carolyn Peck, now normally at this time we would take a look back at the first half, but there are things bigger than basketball that need to be addressed. At but why do they need to be addressed during the basketball game? Why am I hearing about your political statements during the basketball game? I did not click the clicker to land on you preaching to me and telling me what's bigger than basketball. But let, let's see what they continue here. This time, our friends, our family, our co-workers, the players and coaches in our community are hurting right now. And She's lying. She is 100% lying. She didn't qualify that. She said they're all hurting. The players, the coaches, the community, they're all hurting right now. That's not true. But ESPN will push it out there on you. At three o'clock, about eight minutes ago, our LGBTQIA plus. 
is that ever going to stop or are they just going to keep adding letters? It was LGBTQ. Now there's an I, an A, a plus. It's just never going to end. Don't you see that? This is what the woke media is trying to push upon all of us. Teammates at Disney asked for our solidarity and support, including our company's support in opposition to the parental. Now, before I get into that, can we do that? Can those of us who don't believe in this crap get you to rally around and put our message out there? I bet you they wouldn't. I bet you they would never put our message, when I say our, those of us who, who understand that you're trying to push a woke agenda upon us. Rights and education bill in the state of Florida and similar legislature across the United States. I live in South Florida. They're lying. They're absolutely lying. This law is not the do not say gay bill. It's a lie. It's an anti-grooming bill so that you can't foist your opinions on small kids. And a threat to any human rights is a threat to all human rights. And but they never explain what they think the threat to human rights is. You don't have a right to indoctrinate my children. You don't have a right to indoctrinate my grandchildren. You're going to find out. You're going to find out how strong we object. But that doesn't stop ESPN from pushing this crap out. At this time, Courtney and I, we're going to take a pause from our broadcast to show our love and support for our friends, our families, and our colleagues. Why'd she have to read that? If she really felt that way, why was she reading it? I'm not reading. I can tell you how strongly I feel about something. I don't have to look down and read. I don't think she believes a word she's saying. I think she may be one of the people at ESPN who's being held hostage, especially like somebody like this one, L. Duncan. Wait to hear what she has to say. I, I don't know where this is going, but if people don't stand up to this, they're just gonna keep pushing and pushing and pushing this messaging upon us. I was ready to throw something at the television. My wife thought, hey, what's wrong? I'm like, this is insane. Why are they pushing this at me? I didn't click the remote to be preached to. I get preached to on a Sunday by the pastor of my choosing, not a broadcaster at ESPN. So I changed the channel to ESPN2. And then look what I found. Legislation happening in Florida and across other states as well that are targeting our LGBTQI plus communities. No, we're not. If you're not in Florida and you're just seeing what people like ESPN are spewing out there, then you may not know, but they are lying to you. They are straight up lying to you. Many of our colleagues here at ESPN have- Why don't they come out? Since there's so many of your colleagues, there's so many people in the community, why don't they come out on camera and tell us what they feel about the Florida law? have planned and organized a walkout that will be happening at 3 p.m. Eastern today. And but unfortunately, they came back. ESPN should have locked the doors behind them when they walked out. And to be honest with you, we thought we were going to come here today and really celebrate a sport that has meant so much and done so much, including for so many in the LGBTQI. Imagine what we thought. People like me who clicked the remote and thought we were going to enjoy and celebrate a basketball game. I love watching the UConn Huskies women basketball. I ain't tuning in for this crap. Plus communities, but we understand the gravity of this legislation and also how it is affecting so many families. No, she doesn't. There's no gravity. I could take, a, take my camera and go down to the beach and nobody cares. It is such a small sliver of people who even are bitching about this but ESPN throws it out to a national audience as if people down here in Florida are freaking out. It's a lie. Across this country, and because of that, our allyship is going to take a front seat. And with that, we're gonna pause in solidarity. She's gonna pause in solidarity. The other women, they're gonna go blank and silent for a few moments, a moment of silence for people in Florida, the families, the communities who are being attacked it's not true. This wokeism is poison. It's pure poison. And they're forcing us to watch it, they think. But we do have the power of the remote. What the hell is going on? It seems Clay was right about this as well. Even worse than sports going political 
is this idea that you can only believe that Colin Kaepernick mm-hmm. is a hero mm-hmm. or that Steve Kerr and Greg Popovich, when they were attacking Donald Trump, were speaking truth to power and deserve to be lying. Truth to power. What the hell does that even mean? I hate when they say that. It just makes me laugh. Truth to power. Eyes for that or LeBron James or Megan Rapino. It's a one way street. If you are a left wing activist masquerading in the world of sports, you become incredibly, incredibly praised by the woke sports media, which is even more liberal. And I know this is crazy for a lot of people to understand. The sports media is even more liberal than the political media is. That is so true. The sports media, they don't have the boundaries that even the regular mainstream news media has. They just take it upon themselves. ESPN just lets them talk and they'll denigrate anybody who believes anything different. And you know they're covering people who believe anything different. You don't believe me? Ask Tim Tebow. Forget about his skills or lack thereof as a football player. They hardly even talked about that. They just trashed him as a human being. For what? I can't take this crap anymore. It didn't used to be this way. We could turn on the television, grab a beer, soda, some chips, kick up our feet and watch a game and realize that John Madden and Pat Summerall were just going to tell you about the game and it would be enjoyable and you're not going to get preached at and told you're a bad person or the people that you like are bad people simply because of their political views. They only want one opinion, theirs. I think sports and politics by and large should be separate arenas because I think most people go into sports to escape the serious things in life, you know, guys. Absolutely. On a Saturday or Sunday afternoon, it's the weekend. Most people have worked very hard Monday through Friday. They just want to relax. They just want to enjoy time with their family. They just want to just do things that are enjoyable. But ESPN seems to be missing that. They seem to simply just want to push a narrative into people's homes every single day, day and night. I just want to kick their feet up and, and girls and watch a game instead of having to worry about everything else that's going on in politics. That's why sports were so popular. That's why they're called fans. The word sports fan. Fan is short for fanatic. We love our teams. I'm a huge Dallas Cowboy fan. I'm a bigger Notre Dame football fan. I grew up watching the Dallas Cowboys. I hated when they played the Giants because my mom loved the Giants and I was a Cowboys fan. I've watched Notre Dame and had been in pain for 20 plus years because they can't seem to win a national championship. Not once in decades of watching college football and NFL did I ever hear anybody talk about politics and the woke crap that they're pushing on us right now. It's absurd. I know you hear a lot about Ukraine, but there's a different war happening. There's a war right now on our minds. They are simply not shooting bullets. They are using propaganda and wokeness to infiltrate our brains. Many people are falling for it. People I didn't even know would fall for it. Friends, family members who've succumbed to wokeness. And even with them, how dare we have a different opinion? How dare we not want to hear about wokeism during our sport? They don't want us to have any relief. What it represents is using sports as a fulcrum upon which to attack basic American societal values and create a marketplace where only one opinion is allowed. One opinion. That's it. Bears. That's why they're doing it. They don't want to hear from you. It's beyond cancel culture at this point. They don't want you to even think differently. Never mind speak or feel. They don't even want you to think differently. What I believe is there are a lot of people who just want to have honest conversations. And if you sit there on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or wherever you are thinking about sharing your opinion and you share the quote unquote wrong opinion, 
you are absolutely lambasted and many people may decide if you can be tracked down that you should be canceled. When you look at what's happening right now, you have to realize we all knew this was coming. We just didn't pay attention. George Orwell wrote about this a long time ago. He said, the further a society drifts from the truth, the more it will hate those who speak it. Think about that. The further a society drifts from the truth, the more it will hate those who speak it. They don't want us speaking the truth. They only want you parroting the narrative. Look where we are right now. We literally have people switching teams, if you know what I mean, and we're not even supposed to have an opinion or speak anything about it. It is the absolute embodiment of the emperor having no clothes. You see the guy walking down the street with no clothes on, but everybody acts and talks and reacts as if the emperor is fully clothed. We have people literally switching teams and we can't even have an opinion about it. That's absurd. We're just supposed to accept that a man morphing into a woman is normal. Not only are we supposed to accept it, you're not even supposed to question it. I wasn't brought up that way. I don't know about you, but I wasn't brought up that way. Sports has been infected and affected deeply. The programming on networks like ESPN is incessant and deliberate. Orwell had another quote that aptly describes what we're going through right now. He said, the party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes and your ears. It was their final, most essential command. You are being told it is essential for them to tell you to ignore what you see and what you hear. That was me slapping you. Wake up. They are trying to tell you to ignore what you see and what you hear. But unfortunately for them, data shows that 80% of the people surveyed do not want this woke crap in their lives. I'm producing content on this channel for everyone. I don't care whether you believe what I believe, like what I like, like the teams, doesn't matter. It's like a buffet, take what you want, ignore the rest, but I will not promote wokeism. In fact, I will go after wokeism and I will go after those who perpetrate this fraud upon us. In the end, it's you, the community that will determine what I produce and what I don't produce, but I'm not gonna bend the knee to wokeism. It's just not gonna happen. It's just not who I am. But we all know being anti-woke can make you a target Steve is there are a lot of people who just want to have honest conversations and if you sit there on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or wherever you are thinking about sharing your opinion and you share the quote unquote wrong opinion you are absolutely lambasted and many people may decide if you can be tracked down that you should be canceled exactly they don't want us even quieted they want us erased they don't even want your opinion available to somebody else. That's the risk in being anti-woke. But that's a risk I'm willing to take. If they come for me, hey, that's fine. I'm hoping that you're in the 80% that are tired of woke sports. YouTube is a big platform. It's a wide, deep ocean. You have many options for content. But if you want to hear straight, anti-woke sports commentary, maybe a little bit of news commentary, then please go ahead and subscribe. It's the only way I know to make sure that you guys see the content that I produce and I can guarantee you one thing, there will never be any woke content on my channel. Let me know what you think. See you around the campus.